All right, so I've worked uh, a few DE contracts and I've worked some MLE contracts. And on two of the contracts, I did the exact same thing. So this was an MLE contract, machine learning engineer, and this was a data engineering contract. And I took data from on-prem and moved it to a cloud. I took data from on-prem and moved it to a cloud. However, uh, this gets a little confusing. It was different types of data. Now you're thinking, well, no shit. Uh, the data is going to be different from company to company. No, I mean, it was completely different kinds of data. So on the DE contract, we had this was an on-prem, many on-prem, on-prem databases. Right? This was a cloud provider. And it is called AWS. AWS. And that is Amazon's cloud. All right. So I was taking the data from on-prem, from relational, relational databases, DBs, and moving it to this thing called it was the product. It's not an AWS product. It's a separate product called Snowflake. And it, it is a data warehouse. All right, it's a data warehouse. And I was taking all the data from the different relational databases because these morons had almost every kind of relational database. It was like uh, they had no idea. I mean, it was just unbelievable. This is what happens when you let developers make decisions. They had uh, uh, they had SQL Server. They had MySQL. They had Postgres. They had it all. And and you had to take that. They were all in different servers, right? And it doesn't matter. You had to take that data and put it into Snowflake. Um, so I created, uh, and I had to put it into Snowflake. Not, not wasn't a one-time job. Like I wasn't just go. Oh, I need to jam it there. It was. It's called CI CD. Continuous integration, continuous delivery, and that means when something changes in one of these relational databases, it needs to come back into the Snowflake data warehouse, right? Because the people doing the reporting, they need up to the minute information on the data. And they can't go query this relational database server during the day because that'll put too much stress on it. So we move everything into a data warehouse and we do that for reporting, all right? So this data was all kinds of data. It was HR data. It was, um, I don't know, it was, uh, there was some ACC. There was some accounting data, uh, information about what the company did. Uh, that specific to the company data, and it was, and it was all centralized into this Snowflake data warehouse. So it was data, you know. Let's say like uh, you know, relational data, tabular data. It was tabular data, right? Like it has a one, a two, a three. It had my name, like name would be uh, Jones or West or Frederick or whatever. All right. Age, let's say, at 23, 34, 22. That's the kind of data that I moved to this data warehouse. And that's what I did all day. <laughs> you think, oh, hell, you can do that in a week? No, no, you can't, I promise. Uh, and I used a tool, used a tool to do all this. You just can't, you could write the code for it, but that would be hell. I used a tool called Fivetran. And that allowed me to create these connectors that connected to these two and move the data to here for reporting. All right. Now this, this I had to write all the code. This I had to move data for an MLE project. So we could take the data, right, that was here, clean it, clean it, and then move it to this data warehouse for cleaning, which happened to be, guess what? Snowflake. It was the same data warehouse, but the contents were completely different. See this? See that data? Notice how you can read that? You can't read this data. So when you, the word cleaning data means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. However, it's very, very specific to a machine learning engineer, right? Cleaning data means creating the data in a format that the machine learning model can understand 
and doing it to the best of your ability. So here's what data for a machine learning model looks like. Like, wait a minute, I can't understand that. No, you can't. It's all numbers, right? Because that's all machine learning models understand. So when people who were idiots, like the data science team, didn't have this skill, they could just look at this data and know exactly what was what. This is the target variable, right? This is uh, the number of rooms. This is the whatever, all right? This data doesn't look anything like that data, but it's still creating data pipelines. And this was done with Python and SQL. All right, some things have to be done in SQL. So let's say I was cleaning in here. Let's say I had this database. This was SQL Server, SQL Server database, right? So I had to put a target variable because most of these were binary classification problems, right? So I had to put a target variable on here. Well, the problem was that this table was over a billion rows. So how do you put a target variable on a billion row column in Python? Well, the answer is you do not, because you cannot, you don't have a server big enough. You would have to upload your data to BigQuery or put it somewhere and then add the target variable. So could you do it in Snowflake? Yeah, you could do it in Snowflake. They wanted it done here. So that means I had to create an extra column here. And then because these were, most of these were, like I said, uh, classification, binary classifications, it was a one or a zero. So I had to update, create the column, update it here, and then move it to the cloud for the other different teams, the faker scientists and the MLEs, people that know what they're doing, in order to create the models, all right? So two different jobs, I was creating pipelines, and so will you be. As a data engineer, you'll be creating these kind of pipelines. And as a machine learning engineer specializing in ML ops, or even just a machine learning engineer, this is the kind of data you're going to be creating and moving around. It's not going to be understandable to people. It's understandable to the machine. So I just wanted to show you that we're, I think don't, this, I think it's this is confusing to a lot of people. You know, how could you create data pipelines for companies and there'd be completely, totally different pipelines? Well, now you know. One is this readable data that, that gets pumped into a data warehouse that the business needs to read, right? One is data that gets transformed into numbers. We call it cleansing, it's data cleansing process in machine learning so that you can model against it. And it's all numbers. So maybe that'll help understand how you can do the same job, uh, but a completely different job uh, for two different companies.